Hi, welcome to Stars Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a suspense horror movie called Never Let Go, which was released in the year 2024. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The story begins in a dilapidated cottage somewhere in the thick Canadian forests. A woman named June lives in the wooden house along with her twin boys, Samuel and Nolan. They also have a pet dog, Coda, who has been with them for a long time. Right off the bat, we get to know that there is nothing normal about this family. June has told her sons that the outside world has ended due to an evil force. The only safe place remaining, at least the one she knows of, is this wooden cabin. June claims that this house has some magical powers that wards off the ugly and dangerous creatures that lurk in the woods around them. Every time they go outside, all of them must remain attached to the house using ropes. If they wander without it, the evil will get them, just like it got their father and grandparents. One touch from this omnipresent threat and they will be contaminated too. Every afternoon, the trio goes out to hunt for whatever food they can find near their home. They put handmade whistles around their necks, and grab individual ropes that are separately tied to the base of their house. After tying the ropes around their body, the three start moving away in different directions in search of anything edible. One afternoon, while they are out foraging, the boys are thrilled to find reptiles, and Samuel even eats a small frog while it is still alive. Nolan, meanwhile, climbs up a tree to a bird's nest, only to find empty egg shells. He comes down disappointed but soon sees an unspoiled egg on the ground, a few meters away. He runs to grab it, but he has reached the limit of the rope and cannot take another step forward. Frustrated, Nolan pulls with all his might but gains almost no ground. When his brother approaches silently, Nolan can be seen untying the rope. Samuel is outraged by this action and threatens to use the whistle to alert their mother. Nolan swears he had no intention of letting go and just wanted to loosen the knot to reach the egg. However, Samuel says he should have called their mother, as she knows how to stretch the rope by connecting some extra pieces. He also reminds Nolan that the egg might just be a trick played by the great evil. After this short argument, the two continue walking through the forest, with Samuel a few steps ahead. He jokingly claims to be the wiser brother as he is older. But Nolan retorts that they were born only three minutes apart. The two seem to be in good spirits again when Nolan suddenly hears the phrase, she loves me more. He gets irritated and immediately asks what his brother meant by that. Samuel looks back with a confused expression and swears he said nothing. But an enraged Nolan cannot contain his emotions and steps on his brother's rope. Unfortunately, Samuel tumbles forward more than expected and begins rolling down a hillock. The jolt is so strong that his rope begins to come loose. Samuel eventually gets stuck near a tree root and ends up breaking his foot. Realizing the severity of the matter, Nolan begins to blow his emergency whistle frantically. June is skinning their dinner when she hears the dreaded sound and rushes towards her sons. Meanwhile, Nolan has already let go off his rope in order to reach his brother. Their mother also arrives seconds later but she hits the limit of her own rope. As soon as she lets go of it to reach her sons, a white-haired woman emerges from the thicket. June quickly grabs her boys, pulls them upwards and ties a piece of rope around all three. The elderly woman squats right behind her, and the boys realize their mother is seeing the great evil. She asks several times if either of them has been touched, and they assure her they haven't. But when Nolan asks what she is seeing, June doesn't say anything. Moments later, the family returns back to their house while still being connected to the rope. June throws the boys to the floor of their living room and demands that they say a prayer aloud. It is the only way to verify if they have been contaminated. When the boys successfully do so, June puts away the knife and carries Samuel to the sofa. She tends to his fracture as best she can, but Samuel wants to know what she saw in the woods. June then says that she saw the evil version of her mother coming out from the tree root. She adds that the great evil always does these things to unsettle people. That night, she cooks the reptiles the three of them hunted earlier. June's plate is almost empty, and despite that, the food is barely enough to be shared between the two boys. While they eat heartily, she begins to recount another incident that happened long ago. June says that the great evil appeared in the form of a little girl in distress, just a few meters outside the rope's radius. The girl was trapped with one foot and cried, begging someone to help her. Every day, June returned to the same spot, and the little girl was still there, growing weaker each time. June doesn't reveal what happened to the girl but says the incident was a trick by the great evil to lower her guard. 
The next day, the boys go through another step of purification. One by one, they are locked in the basement, tasked to let their imagination run wild. Nolan spends an hour down there and says he saw the house being swallowed by darkness, along with the family. Only when he concentrated on the love of his mother, did he feel the darkness receding. June then asks him to look around and be grateful for everything he has. At night, Nolan asks if his brother saw anything in the forest when the rope came loose. This has never happened before, and it's a bit strange that neither of them saw anything remotely scary. Samuel replies they were just lucky and that's why the great evil couldn't catch them. But then, Nolan brings up a touchy subject, the deaths of their father and grandparents. Everyone was contaminated by the great evil at some point, and June had to sacrifice them to protect her children. Nolan wonders what she would have done if any one of them had been touched during the hunt. But Samuel doesn't like this kind of conversation and says their mother has never lied to them. Meanwhile, June is on the porch sharpening a knife when she hears a man's voice calling her name. It's the ghost of her husband who begins to provoke her. He accuses her of running away from him and lying to the children about how their marriage ended. The husband continues with the taunt but it is obvious that he cannot enter the house. He then guarantees that sooner or later, she will end up letting go of the boys. When she does so, the great evil will turn her against her own children. Sometime later, Nolan is helping his mother in the garden when she notices his curious look. She asks if everything is okay and the boy takes this chance to ask a question. He wonders if it's possible that there are other safe houses like their own. He says he would be happy to know that they are not alone, but their mother categorically denies the possibility. Only the three of them are left in the whole world, and that has to be enough. As the weeks pass by, the family's situation worsens when a harsh winter drives the animals away from the forest. The food supply dwindles and their meals become smaller and smaller each day. One of the few things that keeps their spirits alive is an old hand crank record player. June allows her sons to use it only once a month, on the night of the new moon. The boys love the sound of music and dance around their mother. Seeing them so happy, June even tries to get in the mood, but she can't shake off the threat of hunger. The following day, she goes hunting alone, combining the three ropes to increase her range. She hears a crow nearby and tries to aim her crossbow at it. That is when June realizes the bird is pecking at the half-decaying body of Nolan. Although this sight deeply shakes her, she knows it is the great evil playing tricks on her mind. No other animal appears after the crow, and June is forced to fry tree bark to feed her sons for dinner. The scene quickly shifts to a bright afternoon as the two boys help their mother peel the barks off of trees. Nolan suddenly sees a shadow pass nearby and turns around, only to find that he is all alone. Then, something pulls his rope and he gets dragged through the woods to a well. All of this turns out to be a nightmare as the poor boy wakes up seconds later. Unfortunately for him, he has somehow walked out the house in his sleep. He is now without the rope and something is coming his way from the woods. It appears Nolan is going to face the evil but his mother appears out of nowhere and rushes him inside. Nonetheless, he has to go through the purification ritual again. June forces him to repeat the safety mantras several times before locking him in the basement. Despite this frightening experience, Nolan still doesn't learn his lesson. The next night, he tells Samuel that they need to look for food elsewhere. He even suggests that they can outrun the great evil and bring back everything they find for their mother. Samuel asks him to speak more quietly, as he is scared of their mother. The camera then shifts to the next room and June is indeed listening to their conversation. When Nolan says they no longer need the rope, Samuel rejects the plan and reiterates that their mother knows what is best. However, Nolan says he's no longer sure about that. The next day, June rummages through an old trunk and finds her Polaroid camera. She explains to her sons what a photograph is, showing some from the time when life was normal. June reveals that there is only one photo left in the camera which she is saving for a special moment. However, she says she doesn't know if that moment will come, as winter is far from over, and the chances of survival are very few. The boys seem scared by her tone but she points out that there is still a way to live, no matter how terrible it sounds. The last option is their pet dog, whose meat could feed them for more than a month. But Nolan reacts aggressively at the idea and even accuses mom of being the real evil in their lives. He then storms out of the room and goes to hug Coda. Unfortunately, June has already made up her mind. She soon separates the two and takes the dog to their greenhouse shed. 
She also breaks down in tears during the farewell but believes this is the only way to save her children. June then regains her composure and prepares the bow to shoot their beloved pet. But at that moment, Nolan appears with a machete and declares that the great evil only exists in his mother's imagination. He then cuts her rope and locks the shed's door, preventing her from running back inside the house. June starts pounding on the door, begging the boy to open it but he is convinced that nothing will happen to her. Suddenly, Samuel arrives and the two brothers start fighting while June tries to escape by breaking a window. She is desperate and yells that she hasn't told them the entire truth. June confesses that it was she who brought the great evil to the forest and swears that the danger truly exists. Just then, she hears a voice coming from behind which begins to call her a naughty girl. She turns around and sees the ghostly figure of her mother inside the shed, ready to attack. But June grabs a shard of glass and chooses to sacrifice her life instead of being infected. Outside the shed, the two quarreling brothers finally realize what has happened. Samuel takes a while to accept reality and tries to wake his mother while reciting their mantra. On the other hand, Nolan is shocked by the consequences of his action and begins to wrap the rope around himself. He is extremely confused and unsure what is true and what is make-believe. In the aftermath of their mother's death, the brother's helplessness begins growing dire with each passing day. Samuel falls into depression while Nolan tries to keep them fed with whatever is left in the house. One afternoon, when the food finally runs out, Nolan decides to venture into the forest. He ties all the ropes together and keeps walking until he hits a road. Frustrated and lonely, he begins yelling out for help. Later, when he gets back to the cabin, a hitchhiker named Cole comes responding to the call for help. He offers Nolan food but Samuel comes out to the porch with a crossbow. This is enough to scare Cole who tries to leave immediately. However, Samuel is convinced that he is an agent of the great evil and shoots an arrow through him. Nolan refuses to listen to his brother and runs after the injured Cole. Finds the stranger bleeding out near a tree while calling 911 for help. Nolan then snatches Cole's bag and takes it back home. Even though Samuel is angry with Nolan for disobeying the rules, he eats and regains his strength. A few nights later, Samuel is outside when he sees the ghost of his mama in the shed. Before he can check it out, a young girl appears from the woods. She claims to be Cole's daughter and says that she was waiting for him to come back. Samuel tries to say he hasn't seen anyone recently, but the girl recognizes her father's flashlight which he is currently holding. A nervous Samuel tries to explain himself, but the girl runs into the woods, shouting for help. He chases after her but soon gets his rope tangled in the trees. The poor boy doesn't realize he has run right into the trap of the great evil. The girl he was chasing after turns into a spider-like creature and immediately infects him. Moments later, Nolan finds his brother and drags him back inside the house. Samuel, now corrupted by the evil, locks Nolan in the attic and sets the whole place on fire. He then heads outside and watches the cottage slowly burn to ashes. Fortunately, Nolan escapes the room and is confronted by the evil, which has taken June's form. It attempts to taunt him and infect him too, but Nolan lures the great evil into the cellar and locks it from inside. He then grabs onto the evil and projects his love for his mother toward it. This causes the evil to reveal its true form which turns out to be a scaly lizard monster. It then embraces Nolan before disappearing for good. Sometime later, firefighters arrive at the remains of the house and find Nolan alive under the cellar. Samuel is also recovered, while Coda can be seen running down on the road. The movie ends as the brothers are being flown to a nearby hospital. Nolan yells that they are finally free, while Samuel quietly mutters, she loves me more. This is my explanation for the movie, never let go. So, what do you guys think about the movie? Write in the comment, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.